Okay, hi all. So we're going to go through the lab processing for benthic macroinvertebrates. Um, this is a stream sample that we collected a few weeks ago from Cub Run. And if you remember, we preserved it in an ethanol solution. And so uh, the first step is to rinse it. And um, we've got a waste container for the ethanol and a, a large funnel. And then we're going to be using, uh, this is sort of a two-person operation since I've got such a, pit, a big bottle. So we'll, we'll basically sieve it and um, rinse all the ethanol off and then we'll put it into a smaller container. Got a lot of leaves in here and some debris. So I'm going to just use regular water to um, rinse this out. So at this point, I'm not really worried about the ethanol. So I'm going to remove that from the mix here. Okay. And then I'm, I'm just going to uh, rinse. I'll remove some of these big leaves. And hopefully that'll... Any critters off of them. You can uh, keep the leaves if you if you like. Maybe I'll keep a couple of them. Get rid of some of the bigger ones, and then we can look at the leaves under the dissecting scope. And so you aren't going to see this this kind of leaf matter in the freshwater tidal benthic samples or in the lake benthic samples, you may have a lot of organic debris that's uh, smaller and you can't really rinse that off or out. And so you end up having to look at the debris for the, the critters. the rest of the sample into this white tray with a little water. Okay, and then we'll um, Take the contents of the tray. I have left some leaves in here, and um, we'll take a look at them under the dissecting scope, and uh, maybe we can see a few things in here too if they haven't decomposed. And uh, take a look at it. And you can do um, multiple cycles with the sieve. You can go through and remove some of the water, and um, so let's let's go check out what's in here. Hopefully something. <laughs> Okay, so for benthic macroinvertebrates, we, we usually have some books available to use for ID, but um, we also have these ID guides. Um, so they've got one of each, I guess, and then simple ones. So when you see something like this under the um, dissecting scopes, then you can ID it. So we're basically going to go through a process of counting and IDing. So we start with, uh, I have a couple dissecting scopes here, and uh, the two of us can, can look at this, and, and then we put the samples in these little dishes, petri kind of dishes, and we can use a spoon or tweezers to take things out, and then we'll look at the creatures under the, um, the 
the dissecting scopes and ID them and uh, normally we sort them into uh, just a regular white ice tray. <laughs> So you would put all aquatic earthworms in one, et cetera, clams in another, and then um, we preserve it in a glycerol solution. And uh, after we've uh, sorted them in this tray, we end up putting them in into a small vial with glycerol so that we could go back and verify the counts. So first, let's some leaf. Get a couple of these clams so we can take a look at them. Mm -hmm. Light scope has a little light underneath to help you see things. And then I don't know how well maybe you can see what the There we go, there's the clam. So you basically um, move the tray around. So I've got a couple clams here, so I'm going to put them into the here, and I would cover this with uh, glycerol. And um, then I, I'm just moving the leaf around and looking all over the leaf to see if there's anything that's uh, stuck on the leaf. bit more. And there's a uh, focus you can similar to the light scopes but maybe a little bit uh, easier you can uh, move the do a, a course and and find focus on dissecting scopes. on the sleeve. I'm going to remove them so mix and see if I got anything out. matter, uh, but I'm not seeing anything in this particular sample. And so basically, uh, a group of four or five students would take a set like this and uh, sieve it a little bit more and then go through every little piece of this sample to ID the critters and to count them. Um, so you would start with this and then you would move the common critters into um, a sorting bins here in the ice tray and then you would transfer the, those into a vial um, where you can look at them again and recount them. It's better to, to count them now and so then you can do an assessment of, in this case, stream health. So, um, that's sort of the essence of the procedure. And I can tell you that this one, because uh, usually our samples are a lot denser than what uh, Stephanie and I collected at the stream a few weeks ago. 
And so it can take a really long time to go through these samples. We often have to subsample, so we'll only sample uh, or look at half of the sample rather than the entire sample because there'll be a lot in it and it takes a long time to ID it and count. Um, so you do have to use strategies like that. When you're doing stream research in the field, you often have hundreds of samples and so to, you start out with a strategy that allows you to do subsamples on each of those to do an assessment of what the potential density of macroinvertebrates was and the um, diversity too. So.